In the next several videos here, we're going to take a look at oscillators and we're going to start with kind of a generalized view of oscillators and then we're going to specifically focus on three individual oscillators. But for this one in the next couple of videos, let's just talk about some of the basic principles of oscillators. First thing I want to do as we talk about oscillators is kind of define what they are. Uh, you may also hear oscillators referred to as momentum indicators. That is a common terminology we will often use when we're talking about oscillators. So if you hear someone saying, hey, I want to look at my momentum indicators, the oscillators are probably what they're talking about. They're best used as a way to measure the momentum behind a move because they cycle, they oscillate back and forth and as the momentum is building the oscillators will reflect that and as the momentum is dissipating the oscillators will reflect that as well. They're designed to track the peaks and the valleys of a stock. Remember when we talked about trend analysis, stocks make peaks and they make valleys. Well, the oscillators track with those peaks and with those valleys, and that's one of the reasons they give us some great insight. Usually, in most situations, they follow along pretty closely to what the peaks and the valleys are doing. Sometimes they get out of sync, but for the most part, they're really very close to being in sync with what those peaks and valleys are doing. And when we think about how they're calculated, almost all of them are going to be based on the open, high, low, and close prices. Sometimes you might find something that, that filters some volume in there, but in the case of the, the oscillators, uh, almost all of them are built all around the open, high, low, and close, and then some formula derived from that. So as we think about that, let's just take a look at this image here, and this will kind of illustrate why we call this an oscillator. You see this is a sine wave, a typical audio sine wave. Well, it's oscillating over what we would call a zero line there, and that's the same principle of your market oscillators. A market oscillator just simply goes up and down and up and down. It's just that what it's measuring those up and down movements from is from the market peaks and valleys, and that's why it ends up getting that shape, that oscillation shape. Now, if you take a look at this picture here, you can see three oscillators plotted across the screen. These are the three we'll be looking at later in this lesson. And this is one stock, and you can see how the oscillators are just kind of oscillating up and down. Across the top here, we've got our stochastics oscillating up and down, looks just like a sine wave. Right in the middle here, we've got our RSI. This is a little bit more jagged, but it still has that basic oscillation that you can see as I'm drawing it across the screen. And then finally, across the bottom, you've got your MACD, and you can see this one oscillates at a different pace, but they're all oscillating up and down. And that's the idea behind these indicators. They're momentum indicators that will help track the momentum of the individual trade that you're looking at. Now there's two types of oscillators that we're going to be looking at. One is what we would call range bound and one is what we would call unbound or it's just no, no boundaries to the range. So let's look at each of these. When we look at a bound indicator, a bound oscillator, the readings are going to be bound within some sort of a finite boundary. Typically that's going to be somewhere between zero and a hundred. Normally that is the extension. You can drop as low as zero, you can hit the max at a hundred. You can't go over a hundred though, that's a boundary. You can't go below zero, that's a boundary. And for most oscillators, they're gonna get stuck in that, not stuck, but they're gonna be oscillating back and forth between that boundary. The truth is, they're actually gonna be oscillating between something a little bit lower than that boundary, where 100 would be the max on the bottom side, uh, uh, sorry, 100 would be the max on the top side, zero would be the max on the bottom side, Normally, they're going to get stuck kind of between 20 and 80, or maybe 30 and 70, but there will be a range in there that they tend to oscillate, and when they get beyond that range, we call it overbought or oversold. So we'll look at that more in just a minute. But you need to understand that oscillators can come in the bound range, and they're stuck between two extremes of the, of the reading, as low as zero or as high as 100. Let's take a look over here at one, and you're going to see this is on your stochastics indicator, and you notice that we cannot get higher than 100, and we can't get lower than zero. You also notice this little dotted line that's in here. That dotted line represents the typical overbought and oversold range, and when we're over, 100, uh, over 80 on the top here, approaching 100, it's not very long before the trade turns back down, and when you're below 20 down here in the bottom, it's not very long before it trade turns back up. That is very typical of an oscillator that's bound. In most of these bound oscillators, they can only go so far, and then the, the tension starts to build so strong that they kind of sling back in the other direction. And that's what you're going to find the pattern is, and that's also why we trade them. Now let's look at the unbound oscillator. The unbound oscillator, here's the difference. The readings are not limited within finite boundaries, but rather they've got infinite 
high readings and infinite low readings, and they center around what we call a zero line. Now, zero line represents a bit of an equilibrium where if you're above the line, you're a little bit more on the bullish side. If you're below the line, you're a little bit more on the bearish side, and the zero line kind of represents the equilibrium there. And so this is another type of oscillator that you're going to find, and there's a handful of these as well that are out there, including one that we're going to look at in this lesson called the MACD. So let's take an example here. Look at this particular picture. You can notice that with the MACD, sometimes we've got higher readings that just keep going higher and higher, and sometimes the same can happen for your lower readings here, and there's really no boundaries to how far that can go. Down here in the bottom, you see we've gone as low as negative five. At the top, we've gone probably as high as positive five or even beyond because it's all centered around that blue line right running through the middle there. Can't hardly draw it, but it's there, and that's called zero. That's your zero line, and in an unbound oscillator, it's going to range as far as it wants to with zero representing equilibrium. Still, it's going to oscillate. It's going to go up and down. It's just going to be oscillating around zero rather than oscillating between two boundaries.